Hello everyone, my name is Duke and welcome back to another episode of Ask Us Anything or Awuwa, where we gather your questions from the internet and answer them. In today's episode, we find out if you need an Apple Pencil if you're not drawing on an iPad, the benefits of postpaid over prepaid, and whether a 3 megabits per second download speed is fast enough. Sophie, cue the intro. Wait, before we continue with the video, I have an important announcement to make. Search Ninja is hiring! We are looking for driven, like-minded individuals to join our growing team. But wait, you might be wondering, why would I want to work here? Well, let me show you. You get to work here with some of the most incredible creatives. You get access to incredible studios like this and all of this cool equipment. You also get free parking. So, are you interested? Hit the link below to see what positions we have available. Let's take a look at the first question. Apple Pencil 2.0 versus Logitech Crayon. For writing meeting notes, no drawing is involved. Did anyone try them both? I'm leaning towards Logitech because of the price and reviews say both are decent. But I want to get your guys' opinion on the matter. Well, if you're just going to jot down notes and maybe annotate documents, the Logitech Crayon can provide a similar writing experience compared to the Apple Pencil 2nd generation for a lower price. Moreover, with the Logitech Crayon, there is no pairing process. Just turn on the stylus and write away. At the time of filming, the Logitech Crayon with USB-C charging is listed for 369 ringgit while the Apple Pencil 2nd generation is going for 599 ringgit. However, this Logitech Crayon is currently out of stock. Therefore, the alternative would be the older Logitech Crayon that charges via a lightning port, which is priced lower at 329 ringgit. Both models provide similar functionality from what I can tell besides the difference in charging methods. You should note that the Apple Pencil 2nd generation works with the iPad mini 6th generation, iPad Air 4th generation and later, iPad Pro 12.9 inch 3rd generation and later, and iPad Pro 11 inch 1st generation and later. It doesn't work with any of the base iPad models yet. The base iPad 6th generation and later still relies on the Apple Pencil 1st generation which goes for 479 ringgit. That is still more than both Logitech Crayon models. If you're using a base iPad, I would recommend you get the Logitech Crayon as you don't get any meaningful features by going with the Apple Pencil first generation for your needs. But if you're using an iPad that supports the Apple Pencil second generation, then you should take into consideration that you can charge Apple's stylus wirelessly on the iPad and it attaches magnetically to the frame. So. If those conveniences are worth the extra asking price of the Apple Pencil 2nd generation, then go right ahead and get it instead. Moving on to the next question. May I know what the benefit is of postpaid? Since prepaid also provide unlimited call for plans subscribed like U-Mobile U35. Today, you can get a lot of features on a prepaid plan that was previously only reserved for a postpaid plan. But here are three features that are still exclusive for postpaid plans. Firstly, you can only bundle a smartphone with a postpaid plan, of course on a contract. That way, you can get the phone without paying the full price upfront. For device contracts, you either pay the subsidized device price upfront or pay it via monthly installments together with your monthly bills. Secondly, you get to subscribe to a family plan or add a supplementary line which usually costs less compared to subscribing to another principal line. Finally, bundled services only include postpaid plans. For example, Maxis Family Plan for 4 gives you 4 mobile lines with unlimited data, calls and SMS along with 30 megabits per second home fiber broadband for 299 ringgit a month. Now, the benefits of a postpaid plan over a prepaid plan will depend on the telco. So be sure to check with your preferred telco and compare the prices and offerings to see which plan provides the most value for you. Sticking with the topic of mobile plans, our final question reads, Is 3 megabits per second very slow? Well, 
Alex says 3 megabits per second is sufficient for most mobile users for web surfing, social and video streaming. For context, YouTube recommends 2.5 megabits per second to stream 720p HD videos. If you want to stream in full HD 1080p, it requires a minimum of 5 megabits per second. Netflix recommends 3 megabits per second for its basic plan which streams in 720p HD while the 5 megabits per second is required to stream 1080p Full HD on its standard plan. You can easily find the recommended internet speed of whatever service you're planning to use with a simple Google search. So, be sure to do your research before landing on a mobile plan. Hotlink, for example, lists the internet speed of its unlimited plan which makes it easier for you to choose without digging too much for that information. Well, that concludes our episode for today. Remember to like our video if you liked it and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and TikTok to get the latest news on almost everything. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next Awuwa! Bye-bye!